This I command you, love one another. The Lord says that it sounds so beautiful, doesn't it? Love one another. But in practice, though, it is so hard to live out sometimes, especially in this past year. It seems to me our world is so struggling with love right now. When I seem to talk to my prayer groups, talking to different parishioners, hearing confessions, a lot of people are struggling with anger, holding on to a lot of frustration. We're dealing with a lot of fear. This has been a very chaotic year. And it's left a lot of us deeply unsettled. And I think a big part of that, a big part of that reason, my brothers and sisters, is that we've stopped listening to each other. Instead, we're just shouting each other on TV and the news and social media, but we're not really listening to one another. And listening is so crucial. Listening is the first step in loving. Because before I can love you, I've got to know something about you. I've got to know who you are, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what's going on in your life. Only when I've listened carefully and compassionately to you can then I respond to you with love, to respond in the appropriate way to what you need, to show you the proper love, the proper mercy to help you. Listening is so crucial. Because when I say, ah, oh, I've had enough of you. I'm done with this conversation. I don't want to listen to you anymore. Well, what am I saying with that? But I don't love you. I don't care about you. I don't care about what you think. I don't care about what, what you feel. I'm done with you. I cut you off. Not listening is a big act of not loving. We can also do that, though, when we, when we listen badly to each other. There are all kinds of ways we can badly listen to one another. What do I mean by that? One example would be impatient listening. We've all experienced this in our life, especially if we're, we're having an argument with someone. Oh, go ahead, talk. Say what you want to say. I'm listening. But in that body language, in my tone, it says what? I am doing anything but listening. I'm giving you the opportunity to speak. And I might be hearing words come out of your mouth. But my drawbridge has gone up. And I am just waiting to launch my arrows back at you, to give my counterattack to whatever it is that you're saying. So I might be hearing you speak, but I'm not listening to what's going on in you and why we have this disagreement. I'm not giving that careful, compassionate, critical listening. Another way we can badly listen to another is pretending to listen or distracted listening. What does that look like? Any woman who has ever had tried to have a conversation with a man while the television on knows exactly what I'm talking about. You're talking, he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, that, that, that's nice. Oh, there was a strike, come on. What, what? No, no, I'm listening, I'm listening. You know, talk to me, honey. Right? I'm not listening at all. My mind is somewhere else, which says, I don't care about you right now. I don't care about what you're saying. My attention, my focus is other, other places. I'm distracted. TV has always been a big one of this. But another way they were all kind of distractedly listening to each other is with the cell phone. How many times have we experienced that? Adults do it, but teens especially do this. You ever a parent try to have a conversation with your teen while they're on the phone? He's like, put the phone down, listen to me. What? I'm listening to you. Gosh. And they go right back to scrolling through their TikTok. Again, that, that, that body language it gives off, I don't really care. And they're from a bad listening to each other. Another one we all kind of fall into from time to time, even when we're trying to be good listeners, is listening, but failing to understand. Failing to understand what's really going on in the person. We just want to jump to problem solving. Example of that. Let's say Sue. Sue has her neighbor. Every time she walks out, she sees her neighbors. They talk to each other over the fence. They talk while they're going to get the mail. And so there's a bit of a friendship that's developed there between Sue and her neighbor. But then Sue's neighbor has a little backyard party, a little backyard barbecue. And she invites some other people from around the block. But she either forgets or doesn't invite Sue. And Sue is telling this to her friend, telling her how shocked she was, disappointed. So the friend hears that, 
but immediately jumps to, oh, Sue, don't worry about it. You got lots of friends. Don't make such a big deal. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Now, the friend has, has heard that Sue's upset, but just wants to jump into making Sue feel better. But in that exchange, Sue probably feels worse because her friend has trivialized what she's feeling. Probably is making Sue feel silly for making such a big deal out of it. Instead, the friend should really try to put herself in Sue's position. Why is this such a big deal for her? What is she feeling in that moment of not being invited, in the sense of being rejected? See, that's good listening. It's stepping out of our shoes and stepping into the shoes of the other person to see things from their perspective, to try to understand what's going on with them in the moment. That opens up compassion in us, understanding. That helps us make a connection. That's the first step in loving someone else. That's why I mentioned listening is so critical, the first step in love. You're all, I'm sure, familiar with uh, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. If you've ever been to a wedding, you've heard the famous uh, prayer, right? Love is patient, love is kind. It's a wonderful book I'm reading. It says you can replace love with listening, and it'll be every bit as impactful. If I speak the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not listen, my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clashing cymbal. I may be a gift of inspired preaching. I may have all knowledge and understand all mysteries. I may have all the faith needed to move mountains. But if I do not listen, I am nothing. I may give away everything I have, and even give my body be burned as a martyr. But if I do not listen, it does me no good. Listening is patient. Listening is kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Listening is not ill-mannered or selfish or rude. Listening does not keep a record of the wrong. Listening is not happy with evil but is happy with the truth. Listening never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience will never fail. So my brothers and sisters, it's when we listen with sensitivity, with compassion, that we then open ourselves up to love and relationship. And we see that in our Lord. Everywhere as he goes about, when he interacts with someone, he meets someone, he always asks them, what do you want me to do for you? He gives them first an opportunity to speak, to talk about the needs in their life, what's going on with them, to name their pain. And then he acts. Then he performs the miracle. To so those who are living on the margins of society, those who have been cast off, it's to them that he goes and sits down and has a meal with them, giving an opportunity to tell their stories. And that's how he shows them love. He listens to people. He makes people feel, when he interacts with them, like they're the only person in the world that mattered in that moment. And that's why Jesus had such a profound effect in people's lives. We have another example of that in our world today, right? Our mothers. So we celebrate Mother's Day. What's one of the greatest attributes of a mom? Moms listen. Think about it, especially when you're a little kid and something went wrong. Who was the first person you went running to? Mom. Not because she could solve all of the problems, but because you knew that mom would listen. Oh, honey, what's wrong? Come here. Talk to me. Right? Moms know how to, to get that out of us, to help us to name what's going on, our pain. And just in hearing that someone cares, that someone's listening, isn't that what solves most of those problems? Mom just listens to you and gives you a hug and then sends you on your way. And if she threw in a, a plate of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies, like, whoa, well, that's the cherry on top, right? That solves all the world problems. Mom listens, a hug, and some cookies. I'm 42. That puts everything in me back together again. It's all I need. That's why moms are so great. They listen. 
instead listening, my brothers and sisters, to the world so desperately needs today. We've got to stop shouting at each other and get back to listening to one another. Because this is what the Lord commands you. Love one another. And it all begins with listening.